Kako je stanje medija i kulture u Srbiji? Da li postoji određeni pomak u tim oblastima? Koliko nam je važna medijska pismenost i kakva je saradnja Srbije i Amerike? O tome u 15 minuta razgovaram sa savjetnikom za kulturu i medije ambasade Sjedinjenih američkih država. Tu je sa nama gospodin Filip Bikman. Mr. Bikman, thank you for coming and welcome to Niš. Dobrodošli. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here at Yushne Vesti. Thanks. Um, I would like to, to start this conversation um, uh, with um, your position. Uh, I, w- I would like to, to uh, ask you something about your position. I watched um, your interview with the uh, previous councillor, Timothy Stannard, and that was two years uh, ago. Uh, and uh, he asked you uh, why you came uh, to Serbia, because you served uh, in this region, uh, I think. And you, you said, uh, volim život na Balkanu. Da. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to know, um, do you still think so? And what do you like here? Yeah, uh, I've had a fabulous time so far. And uh, I'll be here in Serbia, let's see, another two and a half years. So uh, it's r- rare when you're a diplomat, you move around all the time. And uh, we do have an opportunity here uh, to stay up to four years. So I'm thrilled that I still have plenty of time to enjoy Serbia. Um, I've really enjoyed getting around uh, and exploring the country. I have uh, two kids, so I spend a lot of time uh, with them, taking them uh, uh, to different places around Serbia. And we live in Belgrade, so we spend a lot of time exploring. uh, uh, And it seems like around every corner is a new adventure. So uh, it's been a really great experience. I've spent about 10 years of Uh, my adult life living na Balkanu, and uh, so it's it been great fun to get to know more about Serbia and get to know more about what makes Serbia unique in the region. Do you like Niš, and uh, what is your reason for coming uh, to Niš? How so, long will you stay here? Sure, so I'm just in Niš for a couple days, um, but uh, it's been fun to walk around. We went to the uh, fortress uh, sort of first thing in the morning once we arrived, so uh, I could see that. Um, but uh, the reason we're in niche is to work on uh, the embassy's programs here. And so uh, today, in fact, we're here to celebrate uh, what is the 20th anniversary of the American Corner in Niche. Uh, it's a great story. It's the first American Corner in Serbia, even before Belgrade. Uh, so we're proud of that, that uh, the first one was here in Niche. Uh, and to meet with uh, folks in media, and uh, in the NGO community and some of our exchange alumni uh, to talk about uh, what's going on in Niche and uh, how uh, we can do more to help support uh, exchange and cooperation and mutual understanding between Serbians and Americans. Uh, first, uh, I would like to talk about the media in, in Serbia and later we'll talk about your programs. Um, in many medias there is um, uh, sensationalism, uh, fake news, non-objective uh, reporting. How do you comment, uh, comment on that and um, how important are credible and local media? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is sensational uh, news and disinformation everywhere. Uh, of course here in Serbia, but also uh, back home in my country and all around the world. It's a huge challenge, a huge problem that we face. And increasingly, we're seeing that we need to do more with uh, media literacy, digital literacy, help uh, help young people, but frankly, people of all generations better sift through all the information that is out there. As people gravitate away from traditional media and traditional institutions, uh, you know, in some respects, there's a lot more choice, but I think that means there's a lot more noise and a lot more disinformation. So we have a lot of programs at the embassy uh, and also through USAID to help uh, people grapple with these choices and help people improve their uh, digital and their media literacy. Uh, Independent fact-based media is uh, the foundation of any functioning democracy. It is so important to help uh, educate and inform citizens so that citizens can make the best choices for their local communities and for their government uh, countrywide. So uh, the media space is a really tricky and challenging one, and uh, it's good to be here uh, with you all um, and 
uh, to talk about uh, talk about these opportunities to improve media literacy and also support independent and fact-based uh, information. I want to mention one report. Um, according to Reporters Without Borders, Serbia ranks 79th in the Media Freedom in Index. And in their report, it is written that journalists are threatened with political pressure. And I want to ask you in such a situation, uh, can we talk about the um, development of democratic uh, society? It, political pressure, but also economic pressure uh, on uh, journalists, on media houses is a tremendous challenge, right, for any uh, any country that is developing their democracy. And if uh, I think you know, one thing about uh, one thing about the United States is we're always working ever better, right? Like uh, I think we do a pretty good ag job acknowledging that uh, we have a lot of ways to improve, and uh, we're kind of always looking back and then looking forward and seeing, okay, how can we make uh, how can we make our society a more perfect union, to use the words of uh, of our founders? And I think that that's a that's a really good goal for every democratic society. And that's why it's so important for uh, journalists, for editors, uh, but also everyday citizens to demand free and independent media and to seek out free and independent media. One of the great things uh, with uh, the digitalization of the world is there are a lot more opportunities uh, uh, to push out positive uh, and fact-based stories. And so uh, our hope is, uh, you know, over the long arc of history, that will prevail. It has to, right? Is there a willingness of the media to cooperate uh, and uh, improve their role in uh, society? Uh, to cooperate with you, uh, with your programs? Yeah, I think so. Um, we have, uh, at the embassy, uh, we cooperate extremely well uh, across to the spectrum of media. Um, you know, we try to be open and transparent and available. Uh, as an embassy, we try to really model good behavior, right? Uh, if we get asked a question, uh, we're quite responsive. Uh, we try to respond to uh, all inquiries we get. And so I think, uh, you know, from the embassy perspective, we want to uh, work with uh, work with everyone who's willing and uh, try and uh, get out uh, a positive story about the U.S. and Serbia and, and our relations and, and to really make sure that uh, the news is informed by the facts uh, instead of just uh, speculative information and disinformation. Mm -hmm. um, how would you rate the uh, cooperation um, of the U.S. Embassy with NISH? Uh, what has been achieved uh, recent years? So we mentioned something, but can you tell us more about it? Yeah, well, uh, I think that cooperation with uh, the people of NISH and uh, more generally in the southern part of Serbia it is actually exceptional, but it can always be better. And one of the reasons that uh, I'm here on my trip is to think about and work on ways that we can expand our cooperation. But when I think about uh, all the different ways that, <coughs> excuse me, when I think about all the different ways that the embassy uh, is cooperating with uh, uh, with different organizations and people here in Niche, it literally starts with high school students who attend uh, access English language programs, uh, high school students. I think we have 50 or 60 alumni of our FLEX program. That's uh, an exchange program that sends Serbian kids to the United States for an entire year to go to high school and live with an American family. Um, we have university programs, and here uh, uh, in Niche, we've had a lot of really positive cooperation with the journalism department, but also other departments. Uh, We've got a great university partnership program that the embassy sponsored that connects George Mason University, a, a big prominent American university right outside of Washington, D.C., with a university here in Niche that's focused on tolerance and reconciliation. It's pretty cool. That is, a, Those are tricky topics, right? And, you know, as an American, tolerance, uh, reconciliation, grappling with our past, particularly on racial issues, that is a tricky, difficult topic. And... Uh, it is uh, kind of inspiring to think about actually using that tough conversation to bring people together across cultures as well. And so I, uh, I think that that's, uh, that's a great example of how we can kind of push the limits and do interesting things and force young people to be thoughtful and have tough conversations on hard issues while also having uh, international exchange. It's great. 
I'll say we uh, do exchanges uh, at the professional level as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, our professional exchange programs uh, really run the gamut. Sports exchanges, cultural exchanges, uh, all different sectors. So we've got a lot of great cooperation and niche. It's all anchored by our American Corner, which uh, has been operating for 20 years. And uh, post-pandemic is kind of blo re-blossoming again with a bunch of really great programs. When we talk about media literacy, um, are the citizens in Serbia, especially young people, uh, um, interested in the media literacy? Yeah, so I ask. I had a chance to meet with a bunch of young people earlier today, and I had a bunch of uh, lots of questions for them. But one thing I asked them was where they get their information, and they all said uh, uh, social media. Um, they get it online, and then I said, "Who do you think has better digital literacy? You guys, your parents, or your grandparents?" And of course, they said that they did, right? Uh, but I think that uh, they. I actually think that they're. They're really cognizant of it in a way that's different than maybe uh, my generation or, uh, you know, sort of older retired folks. I think that they've grown up as digital natives, so they realize, like, that there's a whole world that you have to sift through. It's a really different uh, context and perspective than older generations who, uh, you know, I grew up as a kid and we had a daily newspaper delivered. And I remember that was my first exposure to the news, was reading our local town newspaper. Um, not many folks read the paper anymore. So uh, it's a different context. I actually think young people understand this, and sometimes a lot more than their parents or, gen or grandparents' generation. I want to, to go back um, and to talk about culture, uh, because uh, we mentioned media, uh, education. Uh, but um, when we talk about culture, where do you uh, see it most in Serbia and especially here in Nish? Uh, you mean cultural cooperation or what? Uh, you mean my impressions of culture and Serbia? <clears throat> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> there's so much culture in Serbia, right? And maybe one of the interesting things from a, an American perspective is that we just don't know that much about uh, Serbia, right? I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the Balkans, so uh, maybe I've, <laughs> I've got a bit of an advantage. But uh, whether you're talking about food or uh, Serbia's incredibly rich history of sports, uh, sportsmanship and incredible athletes, um, Arts and, you know, so culture abounds uh, in music fest festivals, whether it's Nicheville or Exit, which, you know, probably uh, everybody, if they know something about uh, music in Serbia, it's Exit, right? But uh, uh, there's a lot of different opportunities. And so I think there's a lot of opportunities for Serbia to kind of expand its footprint uh, in culture and have uh, uh, make a bigger positive impression on the world. One of the things that uh, we do as an embassy is try and build connections. And so uh, we're working in all different ways to build connections in all different spheres, and that includes the cultural sphere. So over the years, we've had interesting programs connecting uh, museum administrators uh, is one example. Um, in talking about cultural preservation, we have a, a program, the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation, uh, that has uh, funded 12 different projects all across the country uh, and is really one of my favorite programs because it's not political, it's not business oriented, it's not security oriented. It's completely focused on showing the respect of the American people for other countries' cultures. Uh, what are the further plans of the embassy in the field of media, culture, and education? So uh, in uh, uh, especially in Nice. So we're very active, um, and right now we have uh, calls uh, for proposals out in I think six different uh, funds seeking uh, proposals for cooperation. Uh, one is for uh, projects that connect uh, Serbia and the United States. One is our Democracy Commission, which is focused on civic uh, civic participation and human rights. Um, another is for alumni of our different exchange programs. If they've gone to the States and been inspired, they could implement a project here in Serbia based on what they've learned. So we have a lot of different opportunities to do, do more. And I would say uh, the only limitation is people stepping up and saying, ooh, I want to do that. We're open for partnerships. We're open for innovative and creative ideas. 
One of the reasons that I'm here in Niche and that we see a lot of uh, representatives are, of our embassy traveling regularly in this region is that we think it's important and we want to expand uh, expand our cooperation with uh, folks in Niche, but then uh, all over Serbia. The war in Ukraine uh, has affected almost every segment uh, in um, of society. Uh, did it also affect the cooperation um, of the between Serbia and uh, America? I think you know we're just on the one year anniversary of Russia's uh, full scale invasion of Ukraine, and uh, it's had dramatic impact on uh, relations around the world. Um, President Biden was in Poland uh, and uh, visited, had the opportunity to visit Ukraine as well earlier this week to talk about uh, the United States' support for Ukraine, the people of Ukraine, and for their efforts to uh, fully liberate their country and to restore their country's territorial integrity. Uh, in terms of how it's changed relationships, uh, I think that... Uh, it has really brought the United States and our European partners closer and closer together as we uh, uh, see our common values and the need to uh, push and work hard to support those values. And we've also been working hard with Serbia. Um, Serbia's government's stated goal is to enter the European Union, and so we've been working together with them uh, 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 to push on that effort. And the last question? Is, uh, do you see changes in Serbia in a few years in all these uh, areas we talked about? Media, culture, education? Yeah, so I won't speak uh, about the past. I've only been here a little while. Um, but I think, you know, hope springs eternal, right? Uh, uh, I think as an American, we're always pushing, uh, pushing forward and we're always optimistic. Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, that path to the EU can speed up for Serbia and its people and that uh, uh, Serbia will have its you know, rightful place in Europe, whole free and at peace. There's so much potential in the Balkans uh, region. Uh, there's so many impressive, creative people, so many innovative, interesting ideas. I'm living in this region because I love this region, and I think that it can really be an amazing success story. So. I'm optimistic, but uh, it's kind of an American trait, right? We always are. But I think you kind of have to be, right? You have to keep fighting for uh, uh, things to go in the way that you want them to. That's a really good message uh, for the end. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rickman. Thank you so much. Gladly, stay miss you 15 minutes. I'm Tamara Tasic.